Hello everyone. Before we begin the video, I would like to say that this video isn't made for kids. This video is made for a general audience who grew up with the show. So sit back and enjoy the fucking video. Christmas time was approaching the island of Sodor. Everyone had been working hard to make sure everything was ready in time for the Christmas party. Thomas the tank engine arrived at the town square with Annie and Clarabelle, and the fat controller was standing on the platform. You're right on time, Thomas. Well done. Thank you, sir, smiled Thomas. I can't wait for everyone to get back together again. Will we be able to sing carols this year? We'll see, said the fat controller. But we better carry on, there's still much to do. And he strolled away. As Thomas waited for more passengers to board his coaches, Craven rolled alongside, pulling a heavy goods train. Won't be long now till Christmas, of Thomas. This is going to be so exciting. Ha, said Craven crossly. It's always the same thing every Christmas and every year. We should be working for the holidays, not celebrate them. Thomas was puzzled. But it wouldn't be as fun for us engines. True that, replied Croban. But this is just our lives as engines. We work hard for our controller to keep his railway running, and nothing more. Now, if you excuse me, I have work to do. And he huffed away with his train. That night, while all the engines were fast asleep, the island began to be covered in thick blankets of snow. In the morning, all the engines were waking up around tin of sheds. Percy gasped as he looked out. Look how much snow there is! Thomas groaned. I suppose I'll have to wear that awkward snowplow. Don't worry, smiled Edward. Think of all the holiday spirit that we'll be spreading to everyone. That made Thomas feel better. Just then, the fat controller arrived. As you all know, he said, every year a special Christmas tree will be going all around the island to the mainland, spreading goodwill to everyone. And whoever works the hardest will pull the train from Natford all the way to the mainland. All the engines were very excited. They all wanted to be chosen for the very special train. Soon all the engines were off to do their jobs. Donald and Douglas cleared the main line, while Duck, Toby and Oliver handled the branch lines. Gordon, Henry, James and Emily pulled their respective trains, and Percy and Rosie pulled coal trucks to each station on the island. Meanwhile, Thomas and Edward were pulling a heavy load towards Brendan Docks. Loco the Diesel was waiting for them when they arrived with a new engine they've never seen before. Who's this, Boko? asked Thomas. This, my friends, is Dustin, replied Boko. He's going to be helping out with the snow before the holidays. Hello, said Dustin. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too, smiled Edward. 
I can see the Christmas train is coming along nicely. Oh yes, chuckled Boko. The twins have certainly been trying to keep their excitement alive. They're just so honored to have such a big responsibility to get the special train sorted. Just then, Kroven rolled alongside, angrily pulling a line of singing trucks. Jingle bells, Alfred smells, Hazel laid an egg. Ow! Hey! Be quiet, shouted Kroven after coming to a stop. Anyway, what's even so special about the Christmas train? Well, began Edward, it's one of the most special trains of the year. It's very important that the train goes all around the island to simply spread the joys of Christmas. The joys of Christmas? Interrupted Craven. Rubbish! Let's see. There's the weather to start with. First it's normal, then it's just non-stop snow. Then there's the chaotic parties. And do not get me started on the songs they have to play over and over and over again. For your information, Craven, replied Thomas crossly, I think there's no need for you to be such a Grinch around here. Besides, you're currently making yourself sound like a hypocrite. I mean, what about three Christmases ago? You seem to have enjoyed it along with Hazel and... And... Then Thomas just rushed out of the docks without saying another word. Hmm. Well, that was before Mother Crowbin. After he had rushed out of the docks, Thomas was already back on his branch line. But because of Crowbin, he didn't feel so jolly about the holiday season anymore. Not even the cheerful sight of the children would bring a smile to his face. Cheer up, Thomas, said his driver. With that kind of attitude, Crowbin should have been sent away a long time ago. I guess you're right, he sighed. That evening, Thomas backed into the sheds where the others were waiting. Evening, Thomas. You're rather late, shouted Henry. Oh, don't mind him, Henry, of Gordon. Thomas just wanted to keep himself busy by showing off how hard he worked compared to us. Especially Dirty Percy. Don't call me Dirty Percy! He wished angrily, as the big <laughs> engines just laughed. Edward could see that Thomas had a lot in his smoke box. Are you right, Thomas? You haven't said anything. Thomas snapped back into reality. Oh, um, I'm fine, Edward, really. Was this about what Craven said this morning? Edward asked. And deep down in his boiler, Thomas knew he had to tell Edward the truth. I'm sorry, Edward, said Thomas. But I really can't get into the Christmas spirit anymore. I mean, what if Craven was right? What if this was all just part of some stupid holiday only people shared together and not as engines? The sheds fell silent. The other engines had heard what Thomas had said and were very worried for their friend. Oh, that Craven! huffed Henry. I knew he should have been sent away ages ago. His behavior for a while has been, well, disgraceful, muttered Gordon. Disgusting, added James. Despicable, finished Henry. Never mind, Thomas, smiled Toby. Tomorrow will be Christmas Eve, so I'm sure we'll all have a great time, whether that engine likes it or not. All the other engines agreed, till one by one, all the engines fell asleep. All except Thomas, who had just gotten an idea. As the driver and fireman were preparing to head home for the night, Thomas peeped out to them. Driver, would it be possible if I woke up early and pulled the Christmas train? The driver was puzzled. We should see what the fat controller says first. Please, sir, whispered Thomas. It's very important that the train spreads all the joy of the holidays before Christmas. And I'm sure I can manage the train by myself. The crew looked at each other, then back to Thomas. If you say so, said the driver. And soon they went home to bed, leaving a very excited Thomas. As 
Dawn broke across the island. Thomas left the sheds while everyone else was still asleep. When he approached Natford Station, he could see that the Christmas train was already on the goods platform. The train looked wonderful, and Thomas grew more and more excited. Eventually, he was coupled up with the train and set off. Now I'll show Proven how much Christmas means to us engines, he puffed. The crew still weren't so sure if Thomas was doing the right thing, but there was nothing they could really do. Later, the fat controller arrived at the sheds, while the other engines had just woken up. Good morning everyone, he called to them. Good morning sir, and Merry Christmas! Pete Percy. The fat controller was just about to go over his list of jobs when he noticed that Thomas was in his shed. The engines looked over and even they were confused. None of them had any idea where he had gone. Uh, I hope that tank engine doesn't end up in more trouble, he sighed, especially since now it's Christmas Eve. Meanwhile, Thomas was enjoying his journey with the Christmas train as he sped down the line. Ha! laughed Thomas. This is easy. Nothing could possibly ruin this moment for the Christmas train. But Thomas spoke too soon as he approached Warden's Hill. As he climbed up the hill, his wheel slipped on the icy rails. I can do it! I can do it! Panted. I know I can! I know I can! At last he had reached the top and started to slow down, but then it happened. Before he knew it, Thomas's heavy train started pushing him down the hill. Cinders and ashes! cried Thomas. He tried to slam on his brakes, but the rails were way too icy, so he kept on skidding down the line as the Christmas train kept pushing him. Meanwhile, Croven was pulling another slow goods train through the snowy countryside. At least the tracks are clear, he huffed to himself, but it doesn't change anything about how I feel today. Then, Croven heard a loud whistle, and heading straight towards him, was Thomas with the Christmas train! HELP! cried Thomas. Get out of the way! The Superman rushed over and switched the points, just in time, while Croven screeched to a stop. Thomas, you twit! cried Croven, but Thomas didn't hear him. He was already racing through the forest. Trees and bushes were everywhere. I want to stop! I want to stop! Thomas cried. As he passed through the snowy bushes, Thomas slammed on his brakes again and finally came to a complete halt. I want to stop! I want to stop! You have stopped! Interrupted the driver. The crew got out of Thomas's cab and they, along with the guard, checked to make sure nothing had fallen off the train. And luckily, nothing had. They eventually walked over to Thomas, and they were not happy. I knew this was a terrible idea, Thomas, scolded his driver. And in case you have forgotten, tomorrow will be Christmas Day, and it's very important that the train is handled with lots of care. Thomas felt very ashamed, and he was just about to say he was sorry when he heard a voice. Hello? Everyone looked around, but there was nothing there. What was that? asked the fireman. I don't know, replied the driver. I don't see anything. Everything fell silent once more, and they waited and listened carefully. Then they heard the same voice again. Hello? Nobody moved, and soon Thomas's crew climbed back into his cab. Easy does it, Thomas. There's something through there. Or someone, added his fireman. Thomas felt worried as his wheels slowly started to turn. He bravely pushed through the thick bushes. 
Then Thomas came to another stop, and his jaw dropped. He couldn't believe what he was seeing right in front of him. There, standing right in front of him, was an engine that almost looked unrecognizable. She then gave him a weak but kind smile. Then Thomas gasped. It was a face he hadn't seen in such a very long, long time. Lady, whispered Thomas. Back down the line, Edward had been shunting at his station when Craven angrily steamed into the yard. Hello, Craven, said Edward. Isn't it a lovely day to be ready for the holidays? I guess it would be if some idiot tried not to crash into me, fumed Craven. There's no need to be rude, frowned Edward. Just tell me what's going on. So Craven explained how he was pulling his goods and saw Thomas pulling the Christmas tree dangerously fast. Once he'd finished, Edward sighed. No wonder why Thomas left the sheds and the Christmas train went missing, he thought. He just wanted to show Crowfin what Christmas meant to us on Sodor. Then without saying another word, Edward set off. Crowfin was confused. Hey, where are you going? To find Thomas, Edward replied, as he went looking for Dustin first. He knew he needed some help from an engine like him through the snow. Dustin was waiting at the docks with Boko when Edward rolled in. Edward? asked Boko. What's going on? It's Thomas. He's lost with the Christmas train, and I need Dustin's help to find him. Don't you worry, Edward, smiled Dustin. Snow has nothing against me. Just let me lead the way and I'll clear away your path. And I'll speak to the dock manager if I can take over your next train, Edward, added Boko. And with that, Dustin and Edward set off with their mission to find Thomas and the Christmas train. Back at the forest, Lady and Thomas had been talking for a while until eventually he thought it would be a great time to ask her something he had been wanting to ask her for a long time. Why are you here? he asked. Where have you been all this time? I'm afraid it's a really long story, Thomas, answered Lady. But I suppose you deserve to know, now that you found me. I don't mind at all, Lady. Please tell me. So with that, she began her story. Back at Christmas 2017, after I left Craven and Hazel and the rest of you to have your Christmas party, I was making my way back to my railroad. However, I was slowly running out of coal, and I was trying to fight through the snow. But just before I could get into the buffers, I finally ran out of coal. I was so scared that I failed Sodor, Shining Time, Lily, Patch, Brunette, and even you, Thomas. There was no one here to save me from the cold, so I had no choice but to fall into a deep sleep. From what I recall where I was sleeping, I was found by two diesels and they took me to the scrap yards. As my snowplow was taken away from me to be scrapped, I thought it was the end of me. But what I didn't know was that I would suffer an even worse fate. I can't fully remember when this happened, but I was apparently bought by a person who wanted to use me as a decoration for their own. I was thankful that the only parts of me that were scrapped were my buffers and bunker. Soon there I stood, repainted and then covered in lights, which I do admit, I did look nice with the lights, but after that Christmas, my new owner didn't really care about me anymore. I was pretty much useless, so I was taken away once more, more of my parts missing, and I was placed somewhere 
where I could be restored. But that day never came. I really didn't want to suffer any more than I already have here, so using the last of my gold dust, I vanished my way to where I am now. Thomas felt sorry for Lady. He didn't know what to say. I have been standing in that spot for many years now, continued Lady, and I felt like everybody has forgotten me, except you, Thomas. After hearing that, Thomas just had to smile. Maybe taking the Christmas train wasn't such a bad idea after all. Not far from where they were, Edward was keeping an eye out for Thomas. And in the distance, Dustin could see Thomas's driver and fireman standing next to some points, while the guard was waving a red flag. Hello there, said Dustin. What's the problem? Thank goodness you're here, replied the guard. Please get the Christmas train out of that forest. And Thomas too, added the driver. It's a good thing we came around here, said Edward. We'll have him out. He then signaled to Thomas by blowing his whistle right behind the train. Thomas looked back sadly, knowing that they have found him. But he turned back to Lady. Don't worry, Lady, whispered Thomas. I promise I'll come back for you soon. I know you will, she smiled. As Dustin pulled Thomas and the Christmas train back onto the main line, Edward rolled up next to him. He was worried that he would end up in trouble for taking the Christmas train without nobody noticing. But he saw that Edward wasn't cross with him. He was concerned for his friend. Are you alright? He asked. I think so, replied Thomas. But I'm sorry I took the Christmas train without knowing who the Fat Controller really chose. I just wanted to show Croven how much fun Christmas could be for an engine, just by simply spreading happiness to all around the island. Never mind Croven now, assured Edward. I'm pretty sure now that because of his behavior constantly getting worse over time, the Fat Controller will send him packing after Christmas. That made Thomas feel a bit better. But he knew now that the Christmas train would be late for the mainland. Dustin, puffed Thomas, you're a big and strong engine who could manage the snow perfectly. Would you please take the Christmas train for the rest of its journey? Dustin smiled. Certainly, I'd be happy to help. Edward, would you kindly go back and get everybody ready for the Christmas party? But Thomas, asked Edward, what about you? Don't worry, I have a job to do for myself. I promise I'll make it before it starts. And Thomas set off to find the breakdown crane, while Edward watched Dustin couple up to the Christmas tree. Good luck, whistled Edward. Thanks, Edward, called Dustin proudly as he set off. Christmas train coming through! Later, Thomas managed to find the crane over at the steamworks, along with a single coal truck and a flatbed. Then he rushed his way back to Lady Spot. The future may look grim for the most part, but I am going to save Lady if it's the last thing I do. At last, tired but triumphant, Thomas finally made it back to Lady, who was so happy to see him. Little oh, Thomas! You even brought some of Sodor's coal for me. It's the least I can do for now, he smiled. As he watched the crew start up the breakdown crane and lifted Lady onto the flatbed, Thomas had another idea. This will make a great surprise for everyone, he thought. But as he looked at the state of Lady, he wasn't so sure. Oh, Lady, Thomas sighed. How am I going to bring you into the party without you looking like that? Maybe I could help, came a sudden reply. The two engines looked over it, and there, appearing through gold dust, came a familiar figure the two engines know so well. As soon as the sun had set around Tidmouth, 
Edward arrived to join the others. The party was just about to start, and everyone was excited. The engines were very pleased to see him. Where's Thomas? James suddenly asked. All the engines looked over. Thomas hadn't arrived yet. I'm sure he'll arrive soon, assured Edward. I wouldn't want him to miss out all the fun, peeped Percy. Thomas is a hard-working engine, smiled Toby, so I wouldn't worry about anything. He's right, Percy, added Boko. I know he's been through so many adventures, and there is nothing he can't handle. Just then, everyone heard a familiar whistle. It was Thomas carrying a large tarpaulin and covering something. All the engines were puzzled about what was on the flatbed and even the townsfolk crowded around him. What's that you brought with you? asked Henry. You're all just in time, smiled Thomas, because I have just found someone that I thought was lost forever. With that, he blew a really long whistle and the tarpaulin was lifted away by a cloud of steam from who was on the flatbed. Everyone gasped as they saw who it was. It was none other than Lady herself, restored to her original beauty. The engines didn't know what to say. Who is that? Rosie asked in disbelief. This here, began Thomas, is Lady. She's the one who keeps the magic of her railway and ours alive. So, in some sort of sense, she is our goddess of each railway. But I don't understand, Percy said. I thought she was just used as a decoration three Christmases ago and was never heard from again. I was, replied Lady. But thanks to Thomas, I was finally found after so long. Then I suppose we'll all have to congratulate him, added Gordon, for saving this magnificent engine from certain doom. Hear, hear, whistled Duck and everyone else joined in as the whole station was filled in a chorus of cheers and whistles. Thomas felt very happy. He was once again the hero of Cyril. Then silence fell as the fat controller stood on top of an oil drum. As a reward, he began, for all your hard work and efforts, as well as finding this very special engine, I am proud to announce that the party shall begin. Merry Christmas to you all. The townsfolk clapped and cheered, and all the engines whistled and honked their horns. The party was a grand success. The engines told stories to each other, people sang carols, and even Santa Claus handed over presents to all the children. Eventually though, when the party came to an end and it all was quiet, it was time for Lady to return to her railway. Do you really have to go? asked Thomas sadly. Yes, she answered. Without me, the magic of both your railway and mine can't exist. The only reason why the magic here hasn't faded is because its guardian hasn't ended up like me. And that's you, Thomas. I just hope you come back soon. Don't worry, I will. I could visit Sodor every time I want to. After all, it's my home too. But I'll miss you dearly. I'll miss you too, lady. We all will. Soon, lady slowly started to back away from the turntable as she began to say one more thing to Thomas. Our magic will remain safe between us, but for now, farewell, Thomas the Tank Engine. Then she disappears through her gold dust, back to her magic railway. The engines were now silent as tears fell down Thomas's eyes. Edward began slowly approaching beside him. It's okay, Thomas, soothed Edward. This time, I'm sure she won't be going anywhere. 
I hope you're right, Edward, sighed Thomas. Then, eventually, all the engines went fast asleep, Thomas being the last one to do so. Months have passed after that Christmas, and aside from some minor events, the railway was back to normal and running as usual. One day, Thomas arrived at the docks with a goods train, then went to rest at the regatta where Edward was also resting. Hello Thomas, he smiled. So nice for you to stop by here. I know, it has certainly been a long day, as well as a long year, puffed Thomas. Yes, quite eventful indeed, replied Edward. Especially now that I had to pull the governor around so well since the fat controller sent Croven away. And suddenly, appearing next to the two engines and gold dust came Lady. That's why it's always wonderful to take some time off, she said. A short silence fell as the three engines stared over the ocean before them. It's quite a few, isn't it? asked Edward. It certainly is, Lady smiled. What do you think, Thomas? It sure is, sighed Thomas. And you know, I've been on quite a lot of adventures for the past few years, and while I have enjoyed most of them, I feel like I'm better off staying where I truly belong. Sodor, the Magic Railroad, but most importantly, my friends and family. Both engines were delighted to agree with their friend, as they went back to staring at the distance, knowing that they had finally come to a happy end of their story.